Blessed weekend to each one of you, my dear friends and brethren in the Lord. Welcome to our God's Word for today, devotional. Let me read to you our text in Acts chapter 23, verses 6 to 10 for today. Now, when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Brothers, I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. It is with respect to the hope and the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial. And when he had said this, a dissension arose between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, nor angel, nor spirit, but the Pharisees acknowledge them all. Then a great clamor arose, and some of the scribes of the Pharisees' party stood up and contented sharply. We find nothing wrong in this man. What if a spirit or an angel spoke to him? And when the dissension became violent, the tribune, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, commanded the soldiers to go down and take him away from among them by force and bring him into the barracks. A sharp division in the council. Now, this is the Sanhedrin council. What is the Sanhedrin council? It is the council that regulates the practice of Judaism. It was comprised of priests, elders, and scribes, whereby most of them were experts in Mosaic law. Most of all, the priest members of the council belonged to the sect of the Sadducees. So the Sadducees are the majority. They follow the Mosaic law only, that is, the first five books of scripture with no additional regulation. The first five books of Moses are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And they tended to be wealthy and got along with the Romans. They believed there is no resurrection from the dead. To their thinking, any blessings God gives will come in this lifetime. So a person needs to, to get their benefits now. So they do not believe on life after death and anything about the angels or those spiritual beings. However, the Pharisees follow the oral law also. Which their scribes claimed came from Moses. This is in addition to their belief to the written law in the Pentateuch or the five books of Moses. Pharisees believe in the resurrection from the dead. They liked power and money, but they didn't want to risk their chance for more power and riches in the afterlife. So they followed extra biblical rules. But unlike the Sadducees, they disliked the Romans. Now, both of these religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, validations came from the people who saw them as great religious leaders. So because of their positions and their titles. Later on, we see that Jesus and John the Baptist had criticized both sects, respectively. We can read that in Matthew chapter 3, verse 7, even Matthew chapter 16, verses 6 to 12. Now, in this particular council meeting, they convened in order to hear and determine whether the accusations against Paul was true or not based on the law. Because there was a rumor that spread that Paul had dishonored or disregarded the Mosaic law by bringing a Gentile into the temple. And here, Paul said, and you hear this statement from Paul. Brothers, I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. It is with respect to the hope and the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial. As they hear this, a dissension arose between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. Paul Witts worked because he used the subject of resurrection, which he believed, to gain sentiment from the Pharisees because the, the Pharisees believe in the resurrection and this provoked the Sadducees who vehemently do not believe on resurrection. 
So by doing so, Paul drew attention away from himself. Surely the message of the resurrection from the dead makes his accusers, particularly the Sadducees, find hard to handle. And when the dissension became violent, the tribune, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, commanded the soldiers to go down and take him away from among them by force and bring him into the barracks. Because the tribune was, tribune was in charge of the citizens of Rome, especially in the well-being. Well and Paul was a Roman by citizenship. The conflict between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, which was violent, was an indication of how the council had posed externally. It appeared externally as respectable. The Sanhedrin court is respectable outwardly, but actually in the inside, it's rotten. It's rotten to the core. It is sad that there are so many religious institutions that are marked by respectability in the outside, but it's really rotten at the core. It is sad that religious leaders would focus and defend a particular persuasion, especially if it's non-essential, just because of pride. Their pride to defend their turf had diverted them from the most essential. And that's happening also in many evangelical denominations. Sometimes, instead of focusing the gospel, proclaiming the, the, the good news and Christ, which is the primary reason why the church exists. There are so many underlying issues which are not essentials that busy or makes the denominations busy and they are diverted anymore from the main essential, which is the gospel. Let's be warned about the attitude of pride, which is very evident in the lives of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Let's warn, according to James' um, statement in what he writes in James chapter 3, verse 13 to 18, and let me read. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly and spiritual demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and, sin and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Definitely this was absent in the council. Unlike the council, Paul and the rest of the team had experienced this peace this impartiality, sincerity, mercies, and all these wonderful good attributes for being wise, as James said. And we know that the source of wisdom and peace is no other than the Lord Jesus Christ. If you and I have the Lord Jesus Christ, we can experience this peace and we can have the true wisdom. For who, who is truly wise is the one who has the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you are really in the Lord, you have the reverence, the fear of God in your heart, then you are truly wise in the eyes of God. May it be that this is true in your life and in my life. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for the realities of sin and evil and wickedness in the hearts of the characters in the Bible, which we, we can learn, which we can re reflect upon. Thank you that by your Holy Spirit, we can understand these uh, principles in order for us to be guided, not to follow bad examples like the Pharisees and Sadducees and only emulate the example of Paul and especially the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you that we did talk about wisdom. It's you who is our wisdom. And reverence and fear upon you is the beginning of wisdom. 
Bless his whole heart today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.